Right, uh, we're going to start covering a few collimation basics um, and we're going to go sort of fairly in depth with some of the parts so that uh, you're familiar with the parts and in the collimation process and how they work. Uh, we're going to start off with the secondary. Um, this will be fairly familiar to you. And this is what we call the spider. Um, and the spider is obviously in the end of your telescope uh, with the crow retaining bolts. Yeah, and inside there, what you have is normally you'll have a Phillips bolt going through the middle. Uh, on this one, I've used a socketed countersunk screw. It's hardened steel, and it's I just find it a lot better because it's really easy to strip the Phillips heads that are, that are in standard Chinese telescope secondary assemblies. So we've got that. Uh, next is usually a spring which just sits on the top there, like that. And then you have your secondary mirror, uh, which is bolted in there. Now obviously when, if you start messing out and sorting your collimation out and doing things like that, you're definitely gonna need a set of these, which is, these are metric Allen keys. You're gonna need a set of metric Allen keys. Right, so how does it work? Well, what happens is your secondary is held with the bolt and the spring like this. Now, the more that you tighten this this central bolt, this actually moves your secondary mirror up and down your telescope. Right, so that's one level of adjustment that you've got there. Um, that that is basically to centre it underneath your focuser. Now, as well as that, you have your three collimation bolts in here. And what they do is, if we take it to pieces again, whoops, if we take it to pieces again, you can see where they protrude here. And what happens is, is that each one of those that you tighten sort of has this action on your mirror. Yeah, so in effect, you've got almost a full 360 degree tilt. So there you've got another sort of adjustment. Now also, because you've got a central bolt, you also have a rotational adjustment. So it all starts to get really complicated. Now you might notice on my, um, on my adjustment bolts, if I just take a, an Allen key of the right size, you might notice that they look a little bit shiny. And that's, the reason is that normally these bolts are a little bit pointed and I've actually ground them to a flat. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the ground to a flat instead of being pointed. The reason being that you can start to have a lot of problems if, you, if you're fine collimating. This is when you get sort of more advanced and, and, you, and you're sort of being very, very critical with, the, with your collimation. What happens is if you get your secondary and you take a look there, you can see that the bolts will start to make indents into the metal at the bottom of your secondary. Now what happens is that if you want to make a very fine adjustment in sort of the rotational axis, you'll find that the bolt, because it scored a hole, that the, it will actually drop back into that little slot. It'll, it'll just knock you back out again. Uh, and there's a fair few answers um, and, and cures to doing that. Obviously the first one is to, to just grind those bolts to a, to a flat. But as you can see, we've got some of the some of the dents and indentations in there. Um, that has actually been I've, I've levelled that one off with uh, with some very fine wet or dry paper. At another point, uh, flat on a table and, and sort of a circular action, just to flatten it off a little bit. But that's not going to cure it completely. And as I said, there's there's various ways that that people sort of find to to try and combat it. What I did is I took a stainless steel washer. Uh, I have this made for me, it's about two millimetres thick and it's got three holes drilled in there which match up with my three collimation adjustment bolts so that when it does sit on there it, it'll hit a point where that washer is locked and we've got a flat surface, well we haven't actually got a flat surface because that's one that I cocked up earlier, right, we all make mistakes but right you've now got a flat area that, that adjusts. You've got this 
it doesn't matter about any rotation this part never rotates it stays locked because of those those indentations that are drilled in it which means that now you've got two nice flat surfaces for your rotational axis now you can go even further than that as I did which I bought a piece of um, Teflon PTFE sheet from eBay and I actually put that in between as well it just gives you that little bit more it just eases the old, the, the old sort of thing makes it nice and smooth um, so next I'm going to put this ball back together uh, we'll take a pause for a minute I'll put it all back together and then I'll explain a few more things thanks for watching